What's up guys, this episode I wanted to talk about Airbit, which is an error tracker for Rails, but it's open source and built in Rails, and you can deploy this to your own server, and it's fully Airbrake compatible. So their API for Airbrake is compatible with Airbit, meaning that you can deploy this to your own server privately, and then run this yourself, and uh, run it for a lot cheaper than paying for a hosted version. Plus, you can use this as a central tracker for all of your Rails apps for one price, just to pay for whatever your server costs are, and then you can have all of your Rails apps send errors to that same server, and you can track those all in the UI nicely. So I've been running Airbit for all of my apps for a while now, and I'm gonna walk you through deploying this um, with my own hosting tool, Hatchbox, and we're going to use that to spin up a DigitalOcean server. We'll deploy Airbit to it, and we will configure the email settings and a couple of other options there. Now you are free to deploy this to anywhere you like. There's a deploy to Heroku button that you can get set up with as well, but I like deploying this to my own server, so it's always running, and I actually uh, run this on a 512 megabyte DigitalOcean server, which is plenty to run um, and is hasn't given me any trouble yet. So at some point, we may have to bump that up to a gig of RAM server, but for five bucks a month, I've been able to track all my errors using Airbit really nicely in my private environment. So that's kind of awesome. So let's dive into the requirements of Airbit. Um, basically, you're going to need Ruby 2.1 or higher and MongoDB. And then once you have Mongo installed, you can clone Airbit or deploy it like you normally would. You'll run bundle install and then you want to bootstrap it for the very first time. And then you can run your Rails server and everything will be set up there. Um, and they have a bunch of configuration options that you can set. All of these are going to be environment variables that you would provide. Now, most importantly, there are a set of SMTP settings here, so you can set the delivery method to SMTP, and then tell it to connect to the server, which is going to be like SendGrid server, or whatever email transactional uh, provider you're using. And then you'll just put in your port, your authentication information, um, your username, password, and so on, and that's going to then um, get all of that set up so that Airbit can just use that um, and its config variables and all that setup stuff will automatically check for environment variables for you. So um, that is most of what we have to do is just set up some environment variables and get this deployed to a server. So if you want, you can go and deploy this to Heroku, but I wanted to walk you through how to set this up on Hatchbox because it works out of the box pretty much with no changes. So I'm gonna drop this down to a 512 megabyte server. Um, I'm gonna call this Airbit uh, Go Rails, and we'll have uh, Ruby 2.3.5 installed. So this is going to then go tell DigitalOcean, hey, spin up a new server. We're gonna wait for a minute. It's going to create that server on DigitalOcean. And then once we are done, it's going to then start configuring that server to install Ruby, uh, MongoDB eventually, um, and it will install all of your stuff like Webpacker support with Yarn and all of that so that you are out of the box ready to go to deploy pretty much any Rails application uh, with the standard uh, functionality. So now Hatch is configuring the server for us. It's setting up all the packages and everything. And in just a minute, we'll be able to go and tell it to install MongoDB on our server so that we can get that up and running as the last dependency for uh, Airbit to be ready to go. Alrighty, all of that has finished up. So I'm gonna click on the MongoDB tab here and then we're gonna click enable MongoDB. That's gonna just install it really quickly for us. And once that's done, we can go to the Applications tab and we'll be able to deploy the Airbit app to our server um, once that's finished. But until then, we're gonna wait until that is done so that we can go ahead um, and do that afterwards safely when we know MongoDB is fully up and running. Now that we have MongoDB running, we can go deploy a new app. I'm gonna just call this one Airbit. We're gonna deploy from GitHub and the repository is Airbit slash airbit. So if you were to go to github.com 
airbit slash airbit. That's the part of the URL that you want, the organization or the user and the repository name. And that's just gonna clone down from master the very latest um, version of this. And you can specify a different branch if you would like. Um, and as you might have noticed, uh, I have actually got the most recent commit on Airbit uh, where I was fixing one of the authentication problems with the latest version of it. So that is all you have to do. This is going to then set it up. You can ignore the Postgres stuff here at the bottom. Um, and if you would like, you can add your environment variables now. This is definitely going to be helpful, but you can always add them later. Um, and these are gonna be all of your environment variables for your email uh, authentication stuff and all of that. So I'm gonna have to go fill out all of these real quick and then I will come back and show you which ones you need to fill out and which values you kind of want to put for each one. And we're back. So the environment variables that I set up here um, are kind of placeholders, but these are using a configuration for MailJet, which is the service that I'm using right now for email providing. Um, but you'll be able to set up the exact same thing here for SendGrid um, or any other service that you might want to use. It'll be slightly different depending on if they use the same ports or not but all of this will be basically the same. So first things first, you wanna set up your Airbit host, and this is going to be basically if you put a domain on this server um, and point it to there, so like a subdomain of airbit.whatever.com, um, you're gonna want that because then in the email links, it will link to your website. Um, correctly with the right domain. So it's kind of important to have. Um, if you want, you can, and, and you don't have a domain, you can just set it to the IP address and that should work. Um, and then the email delivery method you want us to have is SMTP. Set your password and your username. Um, we use plain authentication for MailJet and their server is nv3 mailjet.com. Then you can also set your emails to an approved email address from your sender. Um, uh, so for example, I would want to have errors dot or errors at whatever.com as an approved email sender in MailJet or SendGrid or whatever. Um, then you'll have your SMTP port and just for GoRails or a Hatchbox, I mean, um, this is going to be set as log production log for your Airbit log location. By default, this doesn't actually log to a file and Hatchbox logs to disk um, rather than running its own log server. Uh, all of those logs will be in log production log in production uh, if you set this variable. Otherwise, you won't be able to retrieve those and it won't work quite as expected. So. With that said, um, I'm going to go change the password and the username and we'll go and deploy this and then uh, have this all set up. So I will see you in a second. And as you're deploying on a 512 megabyte server, you'll probably run into a failure or two when we're compiling gems like Nokogiri or UNF extension because those are compiling C extensions which can run out of RAM really easily. And all you just have to do is hit retry and the next try usually works. And then you will have Airbit actively deployed to your site. Now this is not ready to go yet. We need to create a user account first. And Airbit is not going to automatically come with a user account um, or sign up process because it's private. And so we shouldn't be able to register a new account on here because this isn't open to the public. So what we want to do is go SSH into the server. And uh, to do that, you'll have to go into your server go to the SSH keys tab and add a new SSH key there. And then you'll be able to go to your terminal and say SSH deploy at the IP address and you will be logged into your Hatchbox server. Now, if you want to go to the Airbit current directory where it's running the latest version, you can go in there. And we want to run bundle exec. And if you look at the instructions for Airbit, um, they have that rake airbit bootstrap and that's what we want to run um, this very first time and that's the only time we really need to run this manually um, and so we're going to go ahead and do that. And there we go, we get an email and password that we can use to log into our airbit instance now and we can go change these once we're done. So let's log in with that, hit sign in and then we can go to edit profile 
and change our email address and our password there. So here we can just change our password and we can change our email to chris at gorails.com. Um, and you have the options to even go through and set up your um, GitHub or Google accounts to log in. I'm not doing any of that. That will set up, that will require you to set up OAuth apps and then put your keys and all that stuff in environment variables. There are instructions for all that if you want to read up how to do it, but I don't see any need to do that uh, for my private instance here anyways. So we're going to have um, just a new email and password and update our user account here. It will sign us out and we should now be able to log in with that. And voila, so there we go. Now we can log in with our own account, our own password and set up our applications in, inside of here. So Airbit by default will have no applications here but we want to create a new app. This can be whatever app you want. So for example, if I was setting up uh, go rails here we would have uh, exit three and go rails and you could set up the bitbucket repo or wherever um, but all of these are going to kind of be just basic things to fill out really the only thing you need to set up is the name all of these will help you kind of define how this works and you can also turn on notifications through slack or whatever other service you might like so once you create an app like this You'll just go ahead and grab this airbreak config and drop it into your application. So we've got a brand new Rails app that I just created here called Error Example. And what we'll do is we'll go into our gem file. We'll add the airbreak gem into there. And then we'll edit config initializers airbreak.rb and we'll paste that in. And so our host name is going to be the IP address or host name of our server. So right now we don't have a DNS host name set up, just have an IP address. Our project key um, is the one for that app and the project ID is just kind of a variable that's ignored, but it's required if you use the real air break. So that's why they uh, set that. And then for Rails apps, we want to go through and uh, set up the environment and then we want to tell it which environments to ignore. Now we're going to get rid of development here so that in development we can make sure that those errors get sent over and we can make sure that they uh, are visible. And then we want to go to our routes and show you where we're going to create errors. So for example, uh, we have set a main index route here for the root and main controller is actually indexed, but it's gonna call a variable that doesn't exist. That will throw an exception and we should see that logged inside of Airbit if everything goes correctly. So what you want to do is make sure that after you've created this file and set all of that up, you want to go and restart your Rails server just to be sure that it has loaded the latest configuration for you. And then you'll want to go to your localhost 3000 and pull up that error page. And this should pull up the error page just as normal, but in the background, it will send a request to your Airbit server, which should log the error right here at the bottom. So we can see the undefined local variable or method, ASDF, is the exact same error as we see here. And it's going to group these together. So if we see this multiple times and we refresh this page and do this a few more times, we're gonna see that the count of this is going to go up to four, but we only have one error because it's technically the same error. It happened in development, same error name, all of those attributes of the error are pretty much the same except for that class uh, memory address, which it will automatically ignore. So all of these should be treated, treated the exact same. And you'll see here, you can see Go Rails development. So if this same error cropped up in production, you'd be able to see that as well. And so once you figured this out and solved the problem, you can go ahead and click OK, and that will get rid of the error in Airbit. And um, there's also a cool thing here that Airbit will have its own self.airbit, so if Airbit ever had an error, it will track it inside of itself, which is really cool. 
Um, and that's really all there is to it. You can go ahead, create new apps, add them in here, and uh, just set up their configuration. And all of that is ready to go. So that's really fantastic. You can set up a bunch of these applications, sending information to the same server, and tracking all of those privately for yourself. So especially if you were working with clients where they're running apps, and you wanna be able to track the errors in their apps as you maintain them, you can set up your own Airbit server instead of having each person um, set up their own air brake or whatever else they choose to use and you can have all of that tracked in one spot um, for yourself so it could be a nice service to offer to clients if you're doing consulting as well and you have plenty of other options in here you can add more users um, from the admin you can look at all the unresolved errors and there's some other configuration things but for the most part this is all that Airbit does and it does it pretty well and I haven't had hardly any issues with it um, and I've been really happy using it as an alternative to paid services out there um, that generally tend to cost quite a bit of money. Um, the only thing I will say is that you want to use the latest version of Airbrake. It works just fine. I ended up fixing in the last couple days an authentication problem with it. So the latest version of the Airbrake gem, uh, which is like 7.1 or 2, um, works correctly with Airbit now um, and all of that is good. So there's enough of a community and enough support built up so that if you want or do run into problems, you'll be able to go and either submit your own patch and tests and all of that stuff and get them merged in quickly or um, someone else will do that probably before you get around to it. So that's always good. And um, to simply update to the latest version of Airbit, all you need to do is get push um, to Heroku again, or for the convenience of Hatchbox. If you go to your application, you just click deploy again, and it will grab the latest commits from master, and that's all you have to do.